Modding the PS3 has never been easier. There's been a new method just recently released and this guide is going to show you how to mod your earlier versions of PS3s. All PS3s are moddable, but this guide is only going to cover PS3 fats and some PS3 slims. To see whether your PS3 is moddable, just look at the back and if you've got a 2500 then you may or may not be able to use this method. If you got a CECH 3000, then you're definitely going to have to use the other video. Or if you got the PS3 Super Slim, then you're going to have to use the next video. Otherwise, we're going to start with downloading all the software that we need. So we're going to start off with downloading the custom firmware Rebug. This is the new operating system we're going to be uploading onto the PS3. So we're going to go to their main page and scroll to the very bottom and download the zip file. Inside the zip file is the text file with the download link for the custom firmware. So just copy that to your web browser and download the file. I've also got all the links in the description below. Then we're going to go to the Wade's Brewology. This is a collection of all the homebrew that's for our PS3. So we're going to go to the What's New and start off with downloading the Webman mod. This is the backup launcher that we're going to mainly use on our PS3. So download Webman mod and all the extra features and you can download extra themes for it as well but I wouldn't do that right now. If you want new themes, test them out later. Once those all download, we're then going to download RetroArch. RetroArch is a collection of emulators so if you want to launch old school games, this is what you want to use. So download CE, or CEX and this is about half a gigabyte. So it might take a little bit. Then if you want, you could also get another backup launcher, Multiman. So get the base version and this all might take a little while to download. If you also want to update your PS3, if you're not already on system firmware 4.86, you can download it from their official webpage or I'm going to update it through the PS3 later on in the video. Finally, you're going to want to get an MD5 checker just in case once our custom firmware finishes downloading, we could also check its MD5 to make sure it didn't get corrupted somewhere along the way and we don't accidentally brick our PS3. If you do brick your PS3, you're pretty much out of luck because the only way to recover it is through hardware flasher and a hardware flasher is probably more expensive than a new PS3 right now. So yeah. So to make things easier, I'm going to create a folder on my desktop called PS3 and I'm going to move all the files that we just downloaded into it. So I'm just going to select all the files that we downloaded and drag and drop into that directory. Then I'm going to want to check the MD5 of the firmware because we're actually going to be uploading that onto the system chip on the PS3 motherboard. So if this file is corrupted, then your PS3 will be bricked. So the MD5 number it should be is in the title. So just copy and paste that into the checker. And as long as it's the same, then you're good. Then we're going to want to rename the update file to PS3 update, which is also in the file. So just delete a portion of it. Then create a folder in capital letters called update and drag and drop the firmware into it. That's pretty much it. So we're gonna to wanna to copy all the files that we have into a USB stick that's formatted to FAT32. So I'm gonna copy that over. This might take a couple minutes because RetroArch is pretty big and the custom firmware is pretty big too. So finally, you're gonna to wanna to create another directory called PS3 in capital letters and drag and drop the update folder into the PS3 folder. And now we're gonna to jump to our PS3. So again, I'm gonna be updating our PS3 from Sony's official server because it's their latest firmware. So we wanna make sure that we're connected to the internet. Now you could either do it through LAN or Wi-Fi. I'm gonna do it through Wi-Fi, I believe. Oh, no, I'm doing it through LAN. So just make sure 
it's connected to the internet and then we're going to update our ps3 by going to the system update and we're going to do it by the internet scroll through this should only take about five to ten minutes Tops. so it's always best when you're updating your ps3 to update it twice but I'm not going to do that here just to save on time but I am going to do it when I'm doing the custom firmware down the road so we're going to see that it's on 4.86 and then we're going to go to the web browser so in the web browser you want to go to tools by pressing triangle and delete the catch and then again tools and delete the cookies then exit or sorry we're also going to want to set our home page to blank then exit and then re-enter the web browser then you're going to want to search for ps3exploit.net make sure you spell it right and it should be the first or second option the second option will be a little bit quicker make sure you click yes if you don't get this option then start over and just create a new user and then go back to the web browser then go to flash memory and we're going to want to download the patch i'm going to do it by https because you don't really need to download it to your usb stick so once this finishes you're going to want to apply the patch now you could also do a backup of your flash memory before you flash it but again if you do break your ps3 you're going to need to buy a 50 or 60 dollar hardware flasher and it's not a fun process so you'd probably be better off just buying a new ps3 so now apply the patch For me this took about five minutes on my ps3 i know times will vary depending on your ps3 and a whole bunch of other factors if it freezes or anything which i haven't have happened to me yet then just turn off your ps3 and turn it back on you shouldn't have any kind of problem again if you break your ps3 you're a little out of luck but this is a fairly safe process so i wouldn't worry too much about that so now that it's successfully patched, just reset your PS3 to fully apply it. And then we're going to apply the update from storage media. And again, we're going to do it twice just because it's always recommended when you're updating your custom firmware to install it twice. So now that we got the custom firmware installed, we're going to want to go over to and install package manager and install the rebug tool now you're only gonna have to do this once but you're going to toggle the QA so scroll to the very right side and toggle QA flag to enable then you could quit this game and we could proceed with installing all the apps so the quickest way to do that is go back to package manager press triangle on standard and install all the package files so earlier we went to ps3 system storage now we're going to standard which looks at our usb so this might take a while because again retro arch is so big so again you want to finish the installation by clicking on multi-man and it's going to install to the hard drive then you're going to want to go to the webman mod afterwards so we'll take a quick look at multi-man and once it exits we're going to go up to the webman mod and hold l down and then press x Keep holding L down until it fully restarts. Now you have the full installation of Webman Mod. And so now pretty much you can launch games from your hard drive or USB stick. 
which I'm going to cover in another video. But as you can see here, you could either view all your games from Webman Mod or you could view all your games from the Multiman app. But you don't have any games on there yet. So stay tuned to the next video and please like and subscribe if this video helped you out. Anyways, have a good one.